stoked somebody finally wants to talk to me about motorcycles yeah man yeah like <laughs> I, I was i was gonna like uh i didn't i yeah I, we'll probably speak about tattooing but obviously oh, i want to know more yeah. i want to know more about like your of travels course. and your bikes and stuff yeah yeah um, i need to watch the um what's the one you've just done tattoo tales tattoo tales yeah yeah man yeah i need to watch it i'm yeah. not i'm not fucking pressed yeah man. i'm good Sick. for whatever Awesome. So, uh, what's oh, yeah. so what's what's the weather like there now? Can you ride all year round? Nah, we're in nah. Ohio. It's like it's in the like um, I don't know what it is in Celsius, but it's like uh, in the single digits here. Right. Yeah. yeah so so it's fucking cold. Yeah. It's neg negative negative with the wind chill. You know. So yeah. There's some people riding, but it ain't me. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm the same. You Fuck know, that. Fuck yeah. that noise. I'll, I'll ride till it's pretty cold, you know. But yep. once snow hits the ground, I'm I'm about out, you know. It, it's too easy to come off. Yeah, like, and I don't want to like, trash trash my bike over it or myself, yeah, exactly. you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. How's your to with that. How's your knee? Since you're it's talking good, about man. trashing but, yourself, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I did that when I was younger riding BMX, but yeah, yeah it's good. Total total knee replacement, man. It's I'm like seven weeks out from it. Um, it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm back pedaling a bicycle, like on the indoor trainer. And, um, I started doing laps in the swimming pool at the gym and sick. It's good. I mean, I feel like there's less pain now than there was before I started, uh, before I got the surgery. Perfect. That's what you want. So yeah, the range of motion's a little bit less. Like I can't bend it quite as far or straighten it yet all the way, but it should come with time. But other than that, it feels better than it did before. When do when do you think you'll be like fully recovered? They say six months to where I could like right. get back on a BMX bike and stuff or ride dirt bikes, you know, but you know, as soon as the weather good, breaks, isn't it? yeah, I, I mean, it's an like entire, for a full entire new joint. knee. Yeah. Yeah. The entire joint is metal, you know, so that's crazy. It's pretty amazing, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they and told six me, months, they were like, yeah, you can go back to, they told me you can go back to racing dirt bikes and do everything else you want to do. Fuck. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I know. I'm like, that's, that's, one. <laughs> that's, that's something I wanted to speak to you about as well, because I remember because I've followed you for a long time just for from tattooing and stuff. And I I'm sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but before like the chopper thing, you were doing like like enduro and like yeah, yeah the yeah. motocross. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It started with like BMX as a kid, and I did yeah. that for a bunch of years and then got into dirt bikes and doing like uh we do these enduro races where you go through like, you know, almost a whole corner of a state, like all single yeah. track. You never you never go over the same track twice, you know. Just go That's one crazy. big loop. It'll take four or five hours long to get to the end. It's like an endurance race kind of thing over real like gnarly terrain. And like through water and stuff, right? Yeah, you cross rivers yeah. and all kinds of shit. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Why am I I'm sure I've uh, is it I wanna say the Sullen podcast? Did you talk about that on that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Years yeah, ago. That was fucking fuck, that was years ago. Ten years ago, dude. Yeah, shit. Wow. Yeah, that's a good yeah, it's it's still sick. I still love it. Just like I did when I was talking. Yeah. I remember when I talked about it on there, I had just gotten into enduro riding and I was yes. super fired up about it. So yeah, man. still stoked on it. <laughs> yeah, man. And I, I remember you saying about like, like the river crossings and stuff. You don't want to yeah. be the first one. You want to, you want to like yeah. watch which line to take. And yeah. And uh, yeah. An old timer told, told me that he said, you know, if you pull up to a big river crossing, there usually be a whole bunch of people lined up on both sides. Cause they want to see you sink your motorcycle. You know, they want to see yeah. you sink your dirt bike. So <laughs> <laughs> these drunk hillbillies with beer be standing on the side and they're waving yeah come this way but you don't you can't trust them right because they yeah, want to see yeah. you sink your bike at the end of the day so the old timer told me it's smart if you just pull off to the side let someone else go through and follow what you know if they ride across and follow their track you know yeah man yeah that's the one smart is it is it is it strict strictly for fun is there are there any like prizes and yeah. shit, or is it yeah no, i'm sure there is if you did it enough but i was yeah. i was competing at a like a you know, I was going for like a championship of the series for a while back there, but I actually Sick. had a bad wreck and had two of my toes cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had motocross boots on like the best ones you can buy, but I actually Fuck. stubbed the in the inside of the steel toes so hard that it blew my toes apart. Just That's blew crazy. the skin completely off of them. So Holy they call it shit. degloving. 
Ugh. Hitting your toes is like the down. worst fucking injury as well. Yeah. It's so yeah, painful. Me, yeah, people ask me, like, what's that feel like? And I'm like, well, you've kicked, like, the corner of your bed, right? Yeah. And your toe wasn't even bleeding afterwards. It's fine. Yeah. And you know how bad that felt? Imagine doing it so bad that it blows everything off of you. Ugh. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It was one of those pains, though, that's, like, kind of overload where it's like you can only feel so much pain and then it just kind of turns into yeah. just like you just level off and you're like well you know i know yeah. that's bad but I, there's nothing i can do about it yeah man. You know? yeah have you yeah. seen that um you seen that video on uh it's just on instagram i think the guy's riding which, that I GS. Know which one you're gonna say oh, the stick, so the stick, stick goes through his foot oh no no this is a different one oh, this, uh, what's the one this you're guy's, talking about He's riding this like adventure bike, you know, like a BMW yeah. fucking GS thing. And yeah. like, I, I don't know what about over there, but here they overtake like stupid times all the time. They're always going yeah, through yeah. the middle and they're always fucking crazy. So this guy is yeah. doing that and he's going past um, a big truck and he's in the middle and there's another car coming the other way. The other car either didn't see him or just thought, fuck you. And he just clipped his foot and the guy's like, Oof. ah, you know, so he pulls yeah. over and it looks like a clip. But he looks down with his GoPro and his fucking foot is just hanging off. It's just like, oh, oh it's horrible, man. It's yeah. yeah I, well, I'll, I'll I'll find it. I'll send you because uh, the one that ugh. the one that I was talking about it was going around for a while over here. But it was a dude doing enduro racing like I do, and he's just riding along and he hits like a a stick that was laying across the ground. But it went through the bottom of his boot and straight out the top. It went oh, all the way through his foot. Ugh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Uh, so, so, many people, so many people sent it to me because they knew that about my foot shit when it happened, you know. Yeah. So I seen that one a lot. <laughs> so what happened to the foot? Like, how did that happen then? Yeah, the, are you talking about mine? Yeah, I just uh, I was passing. It's actually there's actually GoPro footage of it I can send you, but I was actually yeah, passing cool. a guy who had a GoPro helmet on, and my I hit a root and it kicked my back wheel over, which I clipped a tree. And it basically right. stopped my bike so abruptly that my foot yeah. slid in and clipped that that uh, steel toe. Fuck. Yeah, yeah dude. That's, yeah, that's disgusting. And I got up <laughs> and the guy – I got up and the dude is like – in the recording, you can hear him. He's like, he's like, damn, man, that was bad. And I'm like, I'm holding my foot. Like, dude, I think I broke my foot. And I start to take my boot off. And he's like, dude, I'm a paramedic. If you take that boot yeah. off, you're not going to get out of these woods. Fuck. So I didn't take the boot off. I actually had to finish like – 10 miles of trail so it wasn't like i was riding down a road no. i had to do hill climbs and all kinds of shit yeah i got out to like the highway we're like 20 miles from where i parked That's i have to look weird. up on my phone navigation and ride my dirt bike back to my van load my dirt bike myself and drive myself to the hospital oh no Fuck. it is gnarly <laughs> yeah bro it's it's, it's a, a fucking point. dangerous sport though like i had a i had a customer that used to do it and um he, he had he got scared because he was going through the woods and he goes over like a tree or something and it was wet and the bike just kind of slid from underneath him and he just landed on his yeah. ass, you know, but he fucking yeah. broke his back. Oh like, yeah. Just the way he landed, yeah. like his tail tailbone. Yeah. We really don't ride that. that. Shit. I mean, we do ride fast, but it's not like we're jumping huge jumps. It doesn't look that yeah. dangerous, but it's little freak accidents. We had a guy here yeah. in a race, a stick hit his chest protector and then went up and went through his neck and killed him. You know what I mean? so shit. Like, I'm not laughing because he died, but I just, no, I'm laughing because it's not, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's, it, it's not like you jump the big hundred foot jump and you, you know, yeah. it's like you're just going through the woods. But it does happen. But it's it's pretty rare. I mean, it's Freak not accident. super common. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kinda. yeah. I was looking yeah. at getting yeah. into this, but I might give it a miss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got good uh, trails over there. Have we? Oh, I'm sure. I, do. I imagine yours are better. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I've been around a lot of that Scottish land, and it's it's awesome yeah. over there. Yeah, man. Well, yep. we'll have to do something one one year when you're over. Definitely. I saw you post that you were trying to do a ride from there down to Africa or something, and I yeah. was like, I wonder if I could do that. <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking right. I'll get your bike. We'll do it. Yeah, definitely. Take my shit over and fucking ride, dude. <laughs> I mean, you you could do that easy. Like you you you've that? already done that 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 yeah. that distance. How long is the distance? I don't even know. Uh, 1700 miles. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not awful, but it's, it's a ride, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, you're man. doing it. I, I think my, obviously it's, it's uncomfortable. It's riding that far and stuff, obviously, yeah, yeah. but I think my main problem is that I want to do it on a 49. Um, yeah. But I think as long as I like give myself enough time either way, yeah. I think, 
I want to do it. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone yeah. else has r- ridden from fucking Scotland to Africa. <laughs> I don't know. On a, yeah, on a, a, on a 75 year old bike. I think we're cool. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, that'd be, yeah. there'd be no cooler way to do it. You know? Yeah, man. Definitely. It may. If yeah, you want to do it, cool. I'll get you a bike. I'm serious. I, I mean, if you gave me a time frame, I'll come over and do it. <laughs> yeah, sick. Perfect. Awesome. Definitely. I've uh, always talked about wanting to ride across Europe all the way. Yeah, you know, right, right now is just. I don't think it's a great time to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna end up in war any day now. I'd rather not be on a fucking motorcycle in the middle of Russia. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I'm <laughs> sure that um, Charlie uh, Wessel, yeah. the you know traveling chopper, um, yeah, I was listening to one of his interviews, and he was saying that when he did that big trip from like Portugal to Russia, um, mm-hmm. when he landed, the war had started. When you know in oh, Russia, wow. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm positive, or it was you know yeah. just stirring, and it was. Yeah. It's got to be kind of sketchy. <laughs> yeah, man. But like, there's like so many other ways you could go. You know, if you, even if you like went down through like Italy to Greece and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many like. Yeah. Personally, I think better ways. You know, like if you kind of follow I the sun. Do, I got to do this ride uh, through Nepal a few years ago. Amazing. And one of the guys, one of the guys on the ride was uh, around the world. Doug <laughs> is what they call him. Yeah. And uh, he's went around the world multiple times on, and he did it on like an old chopper and shit too. Yes. And, uh, he, uh, that's kind of how he is. He's like, Oh, you just got to do it, man. You know? And I'm like, I'm a little more, I don't know. Like I'll travel with my friend, Dan, and he's so good at talking to like the cops and shit like that. Like, yeah. Danger done. He'll have the, yeah. He'll have the cops like laughing and he'll be fucking around with them and shit, but it doesn't work like that for me. I'm Same. fucking hogtied. I'm hogtied on the side of the fucking building. And yeah, I didn't even totally. say anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know that I have the tongue to be able to get through all those border crossings, you know? Yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. That's what intimidates me. It's not the ride. Yeah. The ride I can do, no problem. It's like all the interactions you got to deal with. I think that's yeah, no, what I get really you. makes it, makes it yeah. hard. Yeah. You know? I mean, I mean, I think, say like we rode from like here to like Italy or something like that. that yeah. I, I'm I'm positive there's no there wouldn't be any interactions from here to Italy because yeah. like there's no like border patrol as you go from country to country I think there's like tolls and stuff yeah I'm positive I'm positive it, you, you how get does the far. like how does the regulations work for that stuff I mean as far as like what's on your motorcycle is it the same for all of that or what nah you depends know? where you go like if you go to spain um my my friend um ugly north he's just he, he went to spain last year and i think they like wrote him up a i might be exaggerating but i'm sure they wrote him up like a two grand fine because they were like your headlight doesn't work you've got no front brake you've got the hand got this blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. but then they were like so it's like two thousand euros and they were just like right give us 200 euros and you can go but um, Damn, yeah. It, yeah, so that's in Spain. You're not allowed to like modify your bike at all. Um, yeah. Germany, they're pretty strict on it. You've got to have like all you know. I don't know. Just that's hit, my thought. Hit I'm France and just keep it. going. You can write me all the tickets you want to write. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Like it'd be to get over there and get shit taken or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. would be the yeah. thing. You know? Yeah. But no, I, I think you're pretty probably. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that's cool. Yeah, man, we should do. Like, it. Yeah. I know, I know. Like the so the trip going from Scotland to Africa, um, I know getting the boat over to Africa, there must there's got to be something there. There's got to be like a yeah. But I don't. That's the thing. You've got to go through Spain, so you've got to kind of hope you just get through Spain without getting pulled over. And yeah, yeah, that's the funny thing. I've been to Spain. I've been to these different places. I couldn't tell you on a map like where, mm. like where you even go through to go from Scotland to to Africa. You know what I mean? Yes. So you got like Scotland, England. Um, yeah. France into Spain and then over the over the sea and then you're in Africa. Yeah, man. So, if you had a if you had a real timeline on that, I'd do it. Yeah, cool, man. So you know, let me. Like, yeah, yeah let me sick. let me work it out so I'm not like. Yeah, yeah and I'll send it over. Yeah, yeah. I've literally thought about writing you like ten times to bring that up. Oh, sick. Cool. Because I, yeah. I saw you post it once, and I was like, I want to ride yeah. to fucking Africa from Scotland. You know? Yeah, sick. You can just ride my bike. I don't even you know. know. Yeah, that or I was like, I don't even know. Like, it can't be impossible to ship a bike over, right? I think it's like one way. I think it's like fifteen hundred dollars. Is it? So it's pretty expensive. Yeah. But I mean, I've got like a, a twenty twenty heritage there. You, you could ride that. Yeah, it's not yeah. you know, yeah, it's that, not a chopper, but that would make the most sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, you could just ride that. Plus, my problem. bike probably get us pulled over instantly if we ride it over there with the fucking you know no front brakes yeah. or any of that shit too. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, man. So. 
Yeah, let's go on. do it. So, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. We've said it here. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a few people who said, oh, I'd like to do it, but they never get back in touch. You know, they're, they're just... Bro, I'll just they're... go. You tell me when, yeah. as long as there's enough heads up. I'm Sick. I'm in. Yeah, man, perfect. Tell us about That's your trips then, man. have worked out. Shit. Um, the last, last one you did, was, of... that was far. Did yeah, you do like quite a, a couple... far, like, solo one? Yeah. I mean, dude, honestly, most of my rides are solo. Just because... With my job and like stuff like my like being a tattooer, I can kind of go whenever I want for yep. as long as I want. And I can also make money if I want to. Yep. You know? And my shop's also like an operating thing too. So I got, you know, a little bit of money coming in, but from back home. Yeah. So not many people around me can do that. Yeah, you know I'm, I mean? I'm the same. Like I'm like yeah. I've already, I've already posted about it. I'll keep it brief. But like I had like a, a big like tattoo burnout and I was just like, I was yeah. ready to quit. But now I've got I've got my passion back because I've realized like that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna travel on my bike, shop to shop. Yeah. I've just got a private studio. That's what I'm in right now. It, yeah. It's really, it's really cheap. So I'm just gonna travel cool, and just man. get that passion back, you know. So yeah. carry on. It's cool, man. I don't know. You're fine. I don't think there's any cooler way to do it, you know, especially Definitely. like I've done it on other bikes and then I finally uh got on this twin cam chopper. And now doing it on actual chopper, it's like, this is the coolest way you could possibly yeah, do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Your bike I, has made me one. That's my next, that's my next thing. After the panhead's done, then I'm going to build yeah. a, a twin cam. So many people have said that to me, you know, and they're like, they're like, fuck man. I've never really seen a twin cam chopper that I was really into until they it's saw not, that it's one. Beautiful. Yeah. Cause it's got the look, well, my friend that built it, I didn't build it. I have a friend that built it for me, you know, chop and weld here in yep. Dayton. And he, uh, he just has, he just knows the look, you know, and I told him what yep. I wanted. I'm like, dude, I want, I want a big ass fucking bike. Cause I'm a big dude. So it's like, I don't want a little tight, skinny fucking thing, you know? Yeah. And I want to be able to ride it in the fucking woods. I want to be able yep. to ride it, fucking jump it. I want to be, I mean, it's gotta be, <laughs> forceful, you know? Yeah. And we did. I mean, I did, I took it out on its first ride. You know, I took it from his shop and I rolled, uh, I took it down. I rolled all the way to like Florida and yep. then over to New Orleans, I did this big loop and it was like 3,000 miles for his first ride and not one thing happened. Not even That's a loose anything, yeah. nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And That's what Charlie like, rides, that big chopper he's wow. got as a twin cam. Yeah. They're fucking bomb-proof. And yeah, you got to watch the, uh, the the cam chain tensioners on them, yeah. you know, around 20,000. Yeah. So um, after that ride, I was, was at like twenty thousand so i went ahead and had uh we did hydraulic cam chain tensioners in it and yeah. put a cam put a cam in it and stuff because on the highway it was a little like wound out going like 85 90 mile an hour you know yeah so we we changed the cam and then changed the, the gearing a little bit and now it's like, like yeah, dude it's it doesn't it's the best thing ever <laughs> you yeah. know yeah, yeah it's the best of both worlds you know it feels cool and feels old you know but like reliable get on it and you don't even have to think about it yeah man. you know yeah so yeah, I did that ride. Push start. Yeah, you know, walk yeah. out and, burp, and it fires Simple. right up. Yeah. It goes yeah. down the road, you know. I know that it'll never be as cool as like a fucking panhead or any of those, but it has its place. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's is, like, it is as cool as a panhead because of the miles that you put on it, I believe. Yeah. In my that's, eyes. That's, what, what, I mean? that's like, what my that's what my friend says too. He's like, yeah. he's like, dude, it's it's that cool. And he has a knucklehead, like a really badass yeah. knucklehead. And he's like, it's just as cool because of what you do on it, you know? Exactly. You know, if it sat around the, the, the house or just rode around town, it'd be it'd be pretty lame, you know? Which so many people do. So, like, people do that yeah. with a knucklehead. And I think, I don't know, you kind of, I think so many people forget about the riding. <laughs> they get so, like, yeah. focused on, like, having the bike, building the bike, and showing yeah. off on Instagram that they fucking forget to ride Dude, the fucking thing. I, I hate that shit. <laughs> yeah, same. You That's know, why I want to do this ride on the nothing. planet. Yeah, I have nothing but respect for the guys that build those bikes. It's incredible yep. and stuff. But if you start it in the parking lot, roll it into the building, and that's all it ever does for its life, I don't care Shameful. how fucking cool that bike is, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Totally. I just don't care. You know, especially when you got one that's like a brand new build, but they've made it look all old and worn down. Like yeah, it's yeah. rode a bunch of miles, but it hasn't. You know, yeah. I'm just kind of like, you know, it's like I'm not. You know, you should do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But for me, I just don't care. Yeah, you know, it, definitely. Unless it's, That's, been, unless it's I, I, been ridden a lot. Yeah, I, I always my favorite builders are uh, the ones that build bikes that look good, but they build them to ride. Should yeah, I mean? like like I remember this like Caleb this and really stuff. Old, yeah, I remember this old video. It was like corny back. I mean, I thought it was cool back in the day, but it was like 
it was like Kid Rock and Jesse James, and they yeah. built these choppers, yeah, yeah. and then they rode them to Mexico. I fucking love Dude, that. That shit was sick. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, totally. And then you fucking rode them, and it's like, yeah. even though it's not the kind of chopper I necessarily love, I don't they even still care. Did it. I'd rather look at that bike that's been yeah. that gets ridden a lot than you know, totally. not any bike, but a lot of them. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, me, I remember that. I remember like Jesse James, like cold and that like he was like no <laughs> yeah. hands yeah yeah fuck. Uh-huh. yeah, that was yeah cool it's fun, sick, dude. that's one of my earlier memories of like real choppers was like Same. Was, was seeing him and stuff like that you know because you know they were around town but i was young you know yeah yeah so was i so i, I remember know. watching that and being like oh i'd love a bike i mean at the time i'd, I'd looked at that and thought oh i'd love a chopper like that you know but, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what i was like 11 <laughs> 12 yeah. you know yeah i was i was um, young man yeah, yeah. So I didn't know any better. I didn't know it was cool, yeah. you know. But I remember but, uh, that making me feel like, fuck, that's one day, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the motorcycle rides for me is the whole thing, you know. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool because the funny thing about my twin cam is that I did a uh, – it's Sturgis this year. Um, I woke up, and it was early morning, and Dan was sleeping, like, on the ground next to where we were camping. Yeah. And Dan was like getting ready and he was getting up and it was early. And I know he was, he was fucking tired and shit, but he was like, yeah. I got to go over to this place and do this fucking race. This mama tried like race thing. And yeah. I was like, well, shit, I'm going to ride over there and watch, you know? So I rode yeah. over there to watch and uh, not many people showed up. So right. one of the dudes from mama tried who was putting it on, came over to me. He was like, Hey dude, is there any way you could just do a lap on that thing? So we can get some cool footage or something. You know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, I was really, I don't like to be the center of attention like that. So I, I was like, fuck, man. I mean, yeah, I will if nobody else is here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, somebody somebody loaned me a helmet and me and Dan went out and fucking raised hell, dude. It was awesome. Yes. And uh, I mean, we hit these fucking mud holes and they got all these badass photos <laughs> and shit, you know? But when I got done, bikes covered in mud and shit. And the dude from Mama Tried comes over and he's like, dude, is there any way you'd be willing to bring that to put it in Mama Tried this year, next year, you know? So Sick. I'm actually taking it in a few weeks and it's got, it's going to sit on a pedestal at mama tried. <laughs> yeah. That's cool as fuck, man. But he's like, he's like, don't clean it. You know, don't do any of that. He's like, bring it just how it is. So it's still got mud all up the front of it. And, uh, I'm going to throw my like tour pack on the, like my, my pack, of, yeah. like my tent and shit on the back of it. Just yeah. roll it in there. Cause that's, that's how it sits most of the time, yeah, you know, and that proves that proves what we were saying. It, it's cool. Cause yeah. of what you're fucking doing on it. For sure. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. Cause I won that race. So I have like this, chopper um hair scramble enduro race champion trophy yeah, I'm gonna yeah, put it, i think i'm gonna drop it on the ground there by the bike because it'd be, it'd yeah, be well, cool definitely. looking you know yeah, yeah so i'm pretty excited about that it was cool because it was like really my twin cam like all right you know yeah yeah that's, that's but, the thing about the twin cams though they, they are fast you know for you know in harley terms for what it is. Yeah. like yes it, it makes so much sense making a chopper out of it, it yeah it, i just it really don't does. think i don't think you've seen a lot of cool Evo choppers and stuff, you yeah. know, but like twin cams are a little less common. And, but I think that not saying my bike's going to cause it, but a lot, everyone that's seen my bike has been like, fuck dude, I want to do that. Yeah. You know? And I yeah, know two, yeah. two people that's built them since then. So I yeah. think it's like, they're finally getting to a point where people are like, all right, it's cool. They're old enough now to start building choppers. Yeah, out totally. of them, you know, And then people are going to start yeah, doing yeah. it. So we're going to see a lot of really cool ones pop up in the next few years. The twin cams mated, isn't it? Yeah. Or no, from the transmission. Yeah. Is it not? No. Oh, cool. No, I don't think so. Well, that's that's even better. Yeah. Man, yeah. I'm I'm not a fucking mechanic. That's why I don't have an old motorcycle. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can change the oil. I can I can do normal shit. <laughs> if I broke down the yeah. side of the road, I can do normal shit to get myself going Same. down the road. I can figure it out. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm not a mechanic. So when people ask me shit like that, I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't yeah. think so. But <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Cool. That's even better. But, uh, yeah, because you can because you can change the transmission on those. You know, so if yeah. it was mated, it would be all one piece yeah, right sure. like a, like that's what a sports there is yeah 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 i'll um, right i'll here. like fact check that before i put this out Smart man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we're wrong it's fucking yeah, delete it <laughs> yeah i don't claim to like know all, everything about this shit you know and it was weird for me because when mama tried reached out they're like yeah we want to make you an invited builder for 2024 and i'm like bro i didn't build my motorcycle you yeah, know what i mean yeah. i was like i, I just, i'm the fucking pilot i just ride the shit out of it you know yeah, and he's like, dude, it's it's all semantics. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, you, we'll have a placard at the show. You can put whoever built its name on there. But so yeah. there's like this picture of me on the mama tried fucking invited builder. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, fucking, 
I fucking changed the brake pads and fucking oil and shit on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the amount of people that would just do it, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, this is a little sure. call out. If you're listening and you've done that, it's not right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You, it's just, you hear about I, it all the time. Was, They'll like sure. sell when a bike younger, and then. Yeah. When I was younger, I, I would, I had like this hot rod and stuff and yeah. I did a little bit of work to it, you know? Like, I, I was there when we chopped the roof. I was helping sand on yeah. it and do all the shit, you know? So I'd always be like, yeah, I built this, you know what I mean? But then in the yeah. back of my mind, I'm like, I didn't really build it. Yeah. Kind of just like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> But I think as I got older, I'm like, okay with it. It's like, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm a tattooer, man. It's what I do. That doesn't change my love for motorcycles and how passionate I am about it. You know, it's just like, totally. I spend my time riding it. I don't want to fucking spend all my time working on it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. That's what like, I want to do. I like, I, I want to, I, I like that. I know how to, you know, like you say, if you, if I break down on the side of the road, I've got like three guys that I know that I need to call. I tell them yeah. exactly what's yep. happening. They'll walk me through yep. it. And each time yep. that happens, I learn a little bit more and I have to call them yep. less. If that makes sense. Exactly. No, you know, it so does. It's, it's just like, yeah. tattooing. and it's not that, yeah. it's not that I don't care to learn. It's just that I don't necessarily want to learn on my main bike. That's like, you know, like yeah. if I'm getting ready to take this thing, 7,000 miles into Mexico with Dan and them, yeah, I don't want to be the one to trust that I did it right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I let my friends that are better than me that know more do this bike, but I have a uh, a cone shovel head chopper that I'm building right now, and I'm actually doing it myself. I'm going to try to do most Sick. whatever I can myself. Yeah. You know, because that's the one that's the one I'm going to learn on. You know. Yeah. I want to yeah. wire it. I want to, you know, I want to do all those things because I know on that the likelihood of maybe being stuck on the side of the roads a little higher. So I want to spend yeah. my time so yeah. that I can you know fix it myself i don't want to always rely on everybody you know totally and if it that's takes me doing. five takes me five years to do it then it's what it takes yeah, to so get on it. the road you know it is what it is you know that's what i'm doing so with the pan like. um like I, i'm doing as much as i can myself but then mm -hmm. i'm like i've got like uh my mate reese down in wales that i'm gonna take and he's gonna wire it with me because we're putting a mag on it um yeah. and like and then i've got lloyd who you know i'm gonna take it there and i'll be like right this is as far as i can go so Mm -hmm. make sure it doesn't kill me now you know because i yeah, i don't yeah, yeah. i'm not the guy to trust that i haven't done something wrong yeah. you know what i mean or, or put For something sure. the wrong yeah. way or or whatever so yeah, yeah it's but don't don't you find that like you know how to do most things but it's a fear of trying that stops you from doing it yeah totally procrastination for me i'm just like that's for me yeah. it's like i'm sitting there i'm looking at it i'm like i know that I, that has to be right but then yeah. i'm too scared to commit because i don't want to fuck something up yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. Where if you know anybody that works on shit, they got good at working on shit because they just didn't, they just did it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to, you got to be willing to just like take it apart and fucking figure it out. You know, that's Where every builder's advice. Money. Whenever you, yeah. you know, anyone I've asked, like, oh, well, you know, yeah. what would you tell someone just getting into it? They're like, just fucking pull the thing apart. Just do it. Yep. Don't, don't overthink it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the like, fear that stops yeah. us. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'll, I'll like procrastinate yeah. over it for like two days. And then, yeah. know, and then just not do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was when I was breaking that shovel head down because I got it as a fully running bike, and uh, I was breaking it down so I could pull the motor out of it and stuff. Uh, and I did that all myself, but I got down to where the motor and the transmission are in the frame still, and I couldn't figure out for the fucking life of me how to get the fucking transmission out of the frame, dude. I was fighting. <laughs> yeah. like, I ended up picking the whole thing up and taking it to my friend Pat, who owns Lead Sled Customs, and just giving it to him. Yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, I'm the same with that panel. Like we were stripping it down, and um, I got my friend who lives nearby to come and help me take the motor and the trans up because I was like, I'd rather just. I know you can do it. I'll help. I'll yeah. watch, and then next yeah. time I can. Next time I can do it. But and yeah. I've, I've told my friends that who build choppers, you know, like like I was talking with uh, my friend Nick who was talking about Dirty Dick Nick who was talking about yep. helping me. You know, at one point he was going to help me build a little chopper before I even got the twin cam and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I want to like, I want to do it. So can I just like come help? And he's like, yeah. no, he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Nick. We've been friends forever. Right. But he's just like, yeah. dude, that shit never goes well. He's like, it yeah, just man. slows everything down. He's like, so yeah. I get it. You know? Yeah. I'm the exact but, same with Lloyd from uh, last week, July. Yeah. I'm like, I'll say to him, like, I'll pay you like the day, like just I'll pay. To, yeah. But can I'm I just to be get there? Out of the money. Yeah, totally. Can I be there and I'll be like your laborer? I'll help. I'll pass you the yeah. tools, whatever the fuck. Yeah. And he's a, and, and he's a nice guy. So he's like, yeah, man. But you could tell he's like, <laughs> fucking please don't yeah. do that. 
yeah. forward enough to be like, no, nah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, well, and I tried that yeah. with my friend, my friend Pat. He 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 actually tells me I can come down, and you know, he's like, yeah, come down, man. We'll throw the motor in the frame because he built me a frame already. And oh, he's like, we'll we'll throw the motor in the frame and stuff like that, you know. But I just know he's probably like, fuck, man. <laughs> the, 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 the chopper for idiots you know what i mean yeah man but it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like someone like you know coming and just like watching you tattoo and, and you know yeah it, it's yeah for sure i would say no <laughs> yeah but, i would be like yeah. I'm, i'd rather not <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you've got another no, it's like yeah um well i don't know which one which one i i at one point i had like nine i'm i've thinned the herd a bit yeah. since then <laughs> i i remember this like bobber cholo yeah chopper yeah, thing it's, yeah it's a little chopper that uh led sled my friend pat built for me a cool. handful of years ago it's a sportster uh it's a buell yeah. motor actually so it's a little bit yes. hotter than a sportster but it yeah. uh it's great he built that for me like we literally started it for the first time at his shop and then we had it trailered to las vegas where we did the el diablo run out of las vegas so we rode it Sick. you know like five, 600 miles into Mexico from Las Vegas on its very first shakedown ride. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. And I had never ridden a uh, hand shift bike foot clutch at that point either. Yeah. yeah. So I had to learn that literally pulling on out the of the go. parking garage onto Las Vegas Boulevard. <laughs> That's where I learned how to ride the the foot clutch. <laughs> Sick. How many times you've so, done that run? I really want to do that. I've done it four times now, man. Yeah. I was supposed so, to do it last year. I know. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I was also supposed to, supposed to do it last year because me and Dan and Nick and my friend Al, we have this Desperado run is what we named it. Yeah. Yeah. Or leave out of Texas. And I did it the first year of it and I was supposed to do it last year. And then my bike just, my bike wasn't ready. And to yeah. be honest with you, I didn't want to ride my soft tail again. I had this like low rider S, you know, and I did it the first yeah. year on that. The thing was, is like, you know, I was riding with Dan on his chopper. You know, he's got that pan shovel. And then I, I was right. And then uh, the other two dudes were Nick was on a chopper. Al was on a chopper. And my friend uh, Gary from here was on a chopper. Well, I'm on this thing with like cruise control and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And yeah. Uh, my heritage I've got them, now is that same bike. Yeah. I found yeah. it hard to do the ride with them because, you know, on a chopper, you stop a lot. You're Yeah. It's a lot harder of a ride on the chopper, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in this fucking, I got a fucking windscreen. I got a fucking helmet. I got stereo in the helmet. You know what I mean? So like, you know, Dan's stopping every 20 minutes to smoke cigarettes. And I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Let's go yeah. down the road. Not understanding necessarily what they were going through, you know, much different yeah. ride. Yeah, yeah. You know, now having, now having done, you know, I did uh, almost 30,000 miles on my chopper last year. Uh, oh, I understand. I understand what they were doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would want to stop more if I was on that bike. So yeah. coming into that trip, I could have hopped on the soft tail road over there and met up with them and stuff. But I was just like, I just, it's, you know, I'm going to wait until this yeah, chopper is ready and then I'm going to do the trip with them on that, you know? So yeah, I missed, I missed last year's El Diablo run because of that, but, um, I'll be in for the next one for sure. Yeah, man. Sick. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely doing the El Diablo one next year. Uh, yeah, yeah. it's no. cool. Yeah, it's, it's every year other now, year, isn't it? so yeah. it'd be next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Definitely. 2025. I've been oh. going to that since 2013 or something like that. So it's pretty wild. Crazy, you know? Yeah, man. Or 2014, I, 2015. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm working on this fucking visa to just to enter. I've got to get a visa just to fucking enter the states. It's a pain in the dick, man. Is it? Um, is it? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, I get that sorted, and then. Uh, then I'll yeah. yeah next year I'll be over. But I mean I'm, I'm planning on getting over this year. Um, yeah. I'm getting this fucking like O1B visa, so I can just yeah, yeah. come and go as I want and I can work as I want. But the fucking criteria for that is fucking crazy. Yeah, America's a tough one, man. So is like Australia. Yeah, yeah. You know? Australia's yeah, tough. Yeah, I don't no, know what that's what I mean. Going for my visitor one first. If that works, yeah. then I'll go for my work one. But I fucking hate flying as well. Dude, the worst. Well, we're not the size of people that should be flying. You know totally. what I mean? <laughs> totally. You know, like, like, yeah. I don't sit shit. in a fucking chair, you know, and it's like, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know what else to do about it. I'm not like, even if I lose weight, I'm not going to get any narrower. You know what I mean? Nah, it's like yeah, my yeah. shoulders are the, they just <laughs> yeah, are what they are, yeah. man. I don't yeah. know what to, there's nothing else I could do to get thinner, like yeah. on my shoulders. Yeah, totally. So I'm taking up 
everybody's seat around me. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I'm like, hey, Are man, you tall as well? Yeah, I'm like six two. Oh fuck, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. my knees are touching the seat in front of me, my ass is touching the seat behind me, and my fucking it. elbows are in everybody's laps. You yeah, know? man. I feel bad, but I can't afford a eight thousand dollar flight for first class. I, I, I saw you put something up. You put something up recently about that, and I yeah, totally yeah. agree with it. Totally agree with it. Yeah. Like, what a waste of money, man. Just to flex. Dude. I know in my eyes. In my that. eyes. I do. I know tattooers do that, and I'm like, golly, man. I'm like, how are you making that much money? Or is that, totally. are you just down to spend all of it to like ride first class? You totally. Know? Like, and is it for the gram or do you I, really need to, I don't, do you need to, I don't know. I don't, I yeah. don't know. I it's mean, crazy. this dude worked next to me in Paris last year at a convention and he had flown first class over from LA and he said it was like, it was like $9,000. And Fuck. he didn't do a single tattoo the whole weekend. Yeah. Was he like a realism <laughs> yeah. guy? No, he does like a Chicano type tattooing, you know. I mean, right, he's okay. a fantastic, yeah. amazing tattoo. They, char- they charge they nor- a lot though. Yeah, and he's normally booked yeah. pretty well. And I've worked a yeah. whole bunch of shows next to him, and he's busy. Yeah. Every tattooer ends up getting that fluke every once in a while. You just end up yeah, not totally being busy, you know. Yeah, man. yeah and that was yeah. him. And I was like, God, he paid nine thousand dollars to be here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's just a flight. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tattoo that much so either, but yeah. I paid like eight hundred dollars totally. for my flight you know what yeah, I mean? yeah 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 fuck but i would have yeah. to have i would have to have like a an absurd surplus of money to spend nine thousand dollars on a flight like i'd totally. have to be a millionaire by far i was just, i was about to say i would push yeah. it as far to say like i'd need to be making a million a year uh, and yeah. and even then it would be like a treat you know i'd maybe go for yeah first class like a couple of times yeah but, exactly uh, I, I just i'm too tight I, I see that as a motorcycle i'm like that's a whole exactly. motorcycle. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? totally. Like, I can buy a really like, nice shovel it. Same price. I could find like a yeah. beat up pan head or like a fucking nice yeah. shovel head. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. So I just don't, there's no way, you know, couldn't do it. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, uh, but people, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some people like that fucking, the the finer things in life, don't they? Luxury I'm not and shit a, like that. Yeah, I'm not that kind of person anyways, but there's also Same. like, you know, these motorcycle trips I've been doing, they've gotten like more and more stripped down too. And I feel yeah. like the more stripped down they've gotten, the better they are. hundred you know? percent. Yep. And I learned a lot of that from like Nick, Knives Made by Nick and yeah. Dan, yeah, yeah. you know, then, yeah. you know, like we, on our first trip down to Mexico, we stopped at this little park. I think it was closed. We like went around the barriers and went and I'm like pulling my tent out, setting my tent up and shit. And Dan and them were like, just lay on the ground next to their fucking motorcycle, you know? And I was like, that's cool as fuck, man. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I'd never done that, you know, at yeah. that point. And then, uh, since then that's all I do. Cause now it's yeah. like, it just makes everything better, you know? And people totally. are like, Oh, you're crazy. I don't know why you want to suffer like that. And it's like, it doesn't feel like suffering when you're doing it. It just makes yeah. the whole trip feel that much more real, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, do you and sleep I say like the same thing. underneath the, like underneath like a top or do you just outside? I have I have one with me if it's raining yeah. or something like that you know but but most yeah. of the time I have this like leather bed roll I'll just lay out with a sleeping bag cool. on top of it and sleep right there and it's dude it, it makes everything so much better because normally you're riding along it's starting to get kind of dark and you're like all right I need to find a hotel you pull over or you yeah. know find a campsite and you're like looking in and you spend all this time doing it and now it's like you just ride until you're tired then you just pull over and go to sleep yeah man <laughs> you know what I mean You've got some dangerous snakes over there. That's what would, that was yeah. what would make me nervous. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that park where me and Dan and them slept at, there was a sign when we woke up in the morning because when we got in there, it was getting dark. We woke up in the morning. Snakes. There was a sign like right by us that said, "Danger! Crocodiles live in this area." Oh shit! And, you know, everybody just laying on the ground. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck. That's yeah. crazy. Do you That's know, I, I love crazy. like um, Nick does those videos for like how he travels. So I hate like, like, you know, like the, the YouTube videos are like, oh, this is what I packed. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fucks watch it. But I can watch Nick's all day long. I like, yeah. they're so good. He's like, he's like, well, I brought this knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Extra sweatshirt, you know oh, I mean? yeah. and he's like, "Gonna carry a fucking plastic bottle of water because I'm not gonna be." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, or you can be like Dan and like we were in Mexico and Dan, uh, 
his bike starts misfiring or something. So he pulls the plugs out. He's like, oh, fuck, got to change the plugs. So he has this leather pouch on the front of the bike that uh, Nick had made him. And it yeah. has like special fucking spark plug holder pockets. Oh, so Nick's like, Nick's like, oh, yeah, dude, fucking get them. So Nick pops it open and a fucking lighter slides out. There's no fucking spark plugs in there. He has oh, lighters no. In the fucking <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, you know, I guess there's two ways of doing it. You know, yeah, Dan's well. always the road will provide. So that's that's how Dan rolls, you know. But it fucking but works. Uh, it does for him, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if me and you would get that lucky. You no, know, he's not so he's so friendly faced and stuff. You know, it's like yeah. he don't have tattoos all over his face and shit like we do. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no motherfucker stopping to help me, dude. <laughs> like, it's no, just not happening. same. Even if yeah. I'm smiling and waving, yeah, they're not stopping. Yeah, totally. Because on that same ride, we were we were going through the Mexican border through Texas, and it's like Dan and Nick and my. Al and Gary and they're all ahead of me and they're like all dirty and shit right yeah. before we had crossed the border I stopped and got a, I wanted a long sleeve white t-shirt I had a long sleeve black t-shirt on that was kind of dirty and shit mm -hmm. but I was like man I really want a white t-shirt because it's going to be really hot in Mexico so yeah. I grabbed this Dickies long sleeve white shirt put it on so I'm going through the border and I'm on this fucking 2020 lowrider s yeah. white ass shirt on so Dan and them are all in front of me. They get waved right on through. They don't even get talked to. They're just like, come on through, you know, me, pull me to You look the like side. a drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, just pull me to the side, searching my bags and shit, dude. And I'm like, you let all my friends through. And the guy looks at me, he's like, those are your friends? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm with them. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you're good then. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. Like, every fucking roadblock we came up to. Yeah, they fucking waved, waved Dan and them through, and my ass got pulled off to the side. And Dan's like, "You gotta like stop looking so like smug faced to him." And I'm like, "Dude, I'm like smiling and waving and trying to be like it, it as best as I can. I don't know how else to do it, you know." And they still are just like over there, and they search yeah. my shit. They literally got their hand on my friend's pack, who has fucking drugs right there, yeah. like where he's <laughs> personal. Use while they're talking to me about me pulling over to fucking check my shit, you know what I mean? So. Maybe it was good. I was a decoy, you know. <laughs> I'm the fucking same. Every everywhere yeah. we I get searched. I any any airport we go through, I get searched. Yeah. I get pulled in. It's same. fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, it's so funny how that works. But I just expect it every time. I'm like, I put this obnoxious smile on my face, and that probably tips them off because they could tell I'm yeah, trying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totally. not my normal. That's not my normal character to be like super upbeat and smile. You know, I'm a happy dude. I'm very happy, but I don't walk around smiling and waving at everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's of like, course. Me, me They're like, what's he hiding? Him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, man. So it was like every single time that happened. Fuck. <laughs> was that it's the trip funny. where you um you were all carrying knives and you got? Yeah, we got arrested for it. Yeah. What happened there? It was, it was pretty wild. Yeah, we were we were about to get on this um, boat to go across the Sea of Cortez from Mexico over to Baja, Mexico, so we could ride up the Baja coast to El, Diab El Diablo run. So it was like this this boat ride was like 11 hours or nine hours or something long so i was like dude i want to walk to this uh drugstore and get some zequil you know what i mean so i could sleep on the boat yeah so i uh fucking we walk over to this store and it's me and nick and my friend gary and we we get the i get nyquil and we're walking back to our bikes we're like two or three blocks from our bikes and you know they have these trucks that roll around over there with all these like fucking straight up like masked machine gun dudes like yeah, yeah. on the back of them like yeah. the cops are like that and uh we go to walk around the back of the truck and i think nick like gives them a little wave to try to be cool and they waved but then by the time we got around the other side of the truck they jumped out and they're screaming at us they like throw oh. us on the ground and shit you know none of them speak english we don't speak spanish you yeah. know i can ask go to the restroom or fucking how to get chicken you know what i mean yeah and uh they're basically trying to figure out where, why are we there? Cause we were in like this like shithole area of rural Mexico where like there ain't yeah, many tourists fucking... don't go there. No, they don't go yeah. there. And especially not ones that look like, me. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so we're trying to tell them, you know, our motorcycles are over there and they're like, ah, and they're freaking out, you know? And uh, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't know. One of the guys that was with me, I'm not going to say which one, one of the guys that was with me, he, uh, he like we're laying face down on the ground and they're searching us and shit. He's ripped our knives out of our sides and thrown them on the ground. Yeah. And 
the dude's lay next to me and he looks over at me and he goes, I got drugs, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> I, was like I was like, I don't know. I don't What do you want me to do? You know what I mean? And he You'll actually go to got a Mexican prison. Of, <laughs> yeah. He got him. He got him out of his pocket and fucking got it all the way down and stuffed it in his pants without them finding oh. it, without them seeing him do it. Fuck. Yeah. What legend. So I think it was just like a little bit of dirt, a little bit of dirt weed or something. But down yeah, there, yeah. I guess they take that pretty serious. So yeah, yeah. Um, well, you don't want to take the risk. Like, what if so they do? Like, luckily, oh. so so they let Nick up, and they let my friend Gary up. They wouldn't let me up off the ground. Me, oh. they're like, stay on the fucking ground. Gary's smoking cigarettes, talking on the phone. Nick's fucking talking yeah. on the phone, and I'm just laying there like. So then they get me up, and they're like, they fucking tell me to get in the back of the truck. They're like, you're going to jail. You know, oh, and I'm like, man. Oh, just this me? is my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. just me. And I'm like, fuck. And I start looking at, you know, Gary and they were looking at me like, fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I just kept saying to them, please, guys, don't leave me down here. Please don't leave me down here. That's what yeah, I was yeah, saying. Yeah. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm, just, I'm going to Mexican jail now. Like, I'm like, fuck, dude, yeah, I don't yeah. even know what that, I don't even know how to handle Mexican jail. You know what totally. I mean? And it doesn't matter how fucking tough you are. Mexican jail. No. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck no, shit. Right. <laughs> you know, and then like you know america it's like you go in there you kind of posture up you would probably be all right you know if you're a big dude but like yeah i don't think no. i don't know if that works down there you yeah know i don't think I mean? that matters <laughs> I don't think it does. so no. i'm like i'm sitting in the back of the truck like with my hands on my back going please guys don't leave me down here please just saying it over and over and over and they're going we're not gonna leave you down here man blah blah, blah. so a couple minutes goes by and then they tell those two to get in the truck so i'm like oh fuck you know what i mean yeah so what had happened was, you know, you're like, like, you're like, oh, fuck, I feel kind of guilty about that. But phew, for at least I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, now nobody knows where we are. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. They're the only Shit. two that knew what was going on. So at that time, a motorcycle cop rolls up and the motorcycle cop speaks a little bit of English. Okay. So, so my friend Gary pulls out a picture of the motor because we were at this motorcycle shop a few streets over doing oil changes and shit. And he shows his phone to the the motorcycle cop. Yeah. The motorcycle cop talks to the dudes, you know, and then he didn't really say shit to us. As far as we know, we're going to jail. Yeah. Fuck. Throws us in the back of the truck. We're driving. We're like in the bed of a truck with like, whoops, dropped you. We're on the bed of the truck with like the cops fucking surrounding us with like machine guns and shit. And we're like, well, <laughs> we're going to fucking jail, you know? Uh, shit. <laughs> and, uh, we make a few turns and then we turn onto the street where that motorcycle shop is. Right. Okay. So then, then we get excited. Like, Oh shit, we're going back to the spot, you know? And there was this dude Ruley who, who was owned that shop. And I don't know who he's connected to, but this dude's like, I own Mexico. He's a fucking real deal biker dude down there. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We pull up and we're like yelling out of the back of the truck. Cause Dan and Al are over there and they got big ass knives hanging on their side. So we're like, Oh. Hey, it turns out they don't like big knives down here. You know, like, <laughs> like you got to find Ruli. That's the dude's name. You got to find Ruli and, and bring him out here to talk to these guys. Yeah. So he's like, dude, Ruli left. So then we're like, fuck, you know. So they're calling Ruli, trying to get him. He ends up coming back like 20 minutes later and he comes up hot as hell. He's fucking screaming at the cops and shit. He's got a machete hanging off his side and he's like, yelling yeah. at him and shit and then he comes back over and we gave him like 40 bucks so they just let us go gave us our knives back fuck and they gave yeah. you the knives back gave us that the knives back hilarious. i know i'm like that was where i learned how you can get out of basically anything in mexico with money just throw some money at them yeah i just didn't know that was an option i guess you know at the yeah. time yeah you know, America, and, and you probably don't want to do it and then it go wrong either Right. In America, yeah. if you do that, they're like, oh, now you're really fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's bribery. Like, like, yeah. So in Mexico, I, I, I didn't even think about it, you know, but yeah. now it's like you can get through anything with a couple bucks in Mexico, dude. You know yeah, what man. I mean? I think so, it's similar it was, to that in Spain, like depending where you are, it, probably probably not in a city. Spanish, but... Spanish speaking countries. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's a good yeah. story. It's one of those things where it's like uh, it's at the end of the day, it, was, it, was, it made the whole trip fun, more fun. Once yeah, we totally. knew we weren't going to fucking Mexican jail. You know yeah, what I mean? Fuck that, man. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, there's just endless amounts of stories you could go through with that shit, dude. So how long you did know? that trip take? How far was it? Well, I rode from Ohio to Texas to meet up with Dan and them, which that's probably 1,500 miles in itself. I think that whole trip, because I come back up into California and then zigzag back across, I think it was like 8,000 miles. 
round trip wow. on that one. So yeah. how long did it take for you to get from Ohio to Texas? Did you and did you do that well, alone? It, no, I did it with my friend Gary. Yeah. Gary decided Gary decided to rebuild his motor the day before we left. <laughs> I have a friend. So like he Gary. had to do he had to do <laughs> He had to do his break-in miles on our ride to Texas. Oh, shit. Yeah. So Fuck. he shows up to my house. I'm thinking, let's hop on the highway. We'll bang down to like Tennessee, and then we'll get on some cool back roads. Yeah. He shows up, and he goes, I can't go over 60 miles an hour, and I can't hold a consistent pace. Oh. <laughs> so we had to ride <laughs> stoplight to stoplight <laughs> through all, like a thousand small towns. And then shit kept coming loose. We, we I always say we took a tour of like auto parts stores of the whole – trip to texas yeah just to get there <laughs> but so how long did that take but it was like two and a half days which really wasn't that bad of a pace <laughs> but it was yeah. but it was still we could have done it in two days been there that evening you know yeah but it was all good it was fine you know the whole trip probably took like two weeks you know something like that awesome yeah it was good um in 2020 i did one that was uh that's when i bought my lowrider s i owned a tattoo yep. shop in columbus and then i uh Sold my tattoo shop to my partner, mm-hmm. and I took the money and went to the Harley dealership and bought a brand new bike with cash. Yeah, sick. And then I fucking left on a ride for three months, and I did, I did twenty three thousand miles in one loop. Holy shit! And we just tattooed <laughs> along the way. Yeah, tattooing along the yeah, way. Sick. It was during COVID, so it was like kind of All shut right, down okay. still. So, but I still I tattooed probably four or five places along the way, and. Cool. I just rode, dude. I hit every fucking major park in the whole U.S. Rode the whole PCH from like Seattle to fucking San Diego. Fucking crossed sick. every which way you could go. It was, dude, it was so sick. I bet you didn't have one breakdown on that fucking lowrider. Not a single one, dude. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah, it the, was the, my, I, um... Go on. No, I was going to say that. I couldn't ask for anything better for that trip. I mean, it was perfect because yeah. I had like you know, T-sport bags and shit on it. So I, or uh, not T-sport bags, but whatever the bags are that you can yeah. detach and they expand. And I fit everything I needed for three fucking months on that bike. You know, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. I, I've got a 2020 um, heritage and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same bike, but different, you know, like just like, yeah, just different configuration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it yeah. just goes, it's kind of, yeah. but I like, I like, like I got, I got it because it's reliable, you know, but like, I feel like, the newer ones, they've just got no soul. You know, they've got no like character. They just kind of zero. Yeah, they're cool. But... I feel like I feel like it took thirty thousand miles for mine to have soul. Yes. Do you yeah, know yeah, what I totally. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like when I go out and look at it now, because it's sat for two years now. I don't even touch it. It just sits. Yeah. But like, because yeah. I mean, it's a twenty twenty, and it's got almost forty thousand miles on it. So it's like, right. I'm not going to sell it for anything if I sell it. So I'm just going to keep it and ride it. A couple yeah, times sense. here and there, you yeah, know, man. start it every yeah. once in a while and keep it, you know. So if I ever needed to like get on a bike and boogie to like California, I could That's jump on one. that thing and run a hundred mile an hour to California, you know. So yeah, I'm keeping it, but I like put all these stickers from all the places I visited all on the inside of the fairing and shit. So it's got like, sick. it's plastered with stickers on the inside of the fairing, you know, and yeah, like cool. it's got soul, it's got soul now, you know. Yeah, man. Sick. How many bikes you got now? Well, I've got that. I've got that shovel head that's now just a motor, but I got the whole shovel head. Yep. <laughs> um, I have a 92 FXR that's fully built. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and that's like, that thing's, it's as cool as can be. It's like a show bike, but I don't Sick. ride it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm telling My you, friend's got set- one for like, it's an 85, totally stock. Yeah. And he'll sell it. He'll, he said he'll sell it to me for like two or two and a half grand. And I, yeah. I've just not got it yet, but. I love FX. Dude, that's, a, like, oh, fuck. that's a good fucking, that's a good fucking deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought mine. I bought mine during like the height of when they were real expensive. FXL, yeah. And, and then I rebuilt it. Like I had a buddy rebuild the whole thing. So it's like, I, I'm probably, I'm probably $20,000 in mine. So, and yeah. I could probably sell it right now for like fucking 10. So I think I'll just yeah. keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'll be like, it'll be, it'll be a collector's item by the time yeah. I'm like 60. You know what I mean? So uh, have you like club styled it or is it, yeah, it's yeah, That's it's sick. it's got like the uh, um, R fairing on it and all yeah. that shit. Yeah, it's cool. badass. It's cool, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's cool as can be. But ever since that chopper has been on the road, the the twin cam, I won't pick anything else. That's your go to, yeah, man. It's like a bummer to me to pick anything else. You know, it's like <laughs> that FXR got done about the same time my chopper got done, and yeah. that FXR I've ridden it two times. Yeah, man. 
yeah like to the to the bar and back but like <laughs> he, like the even though it's a twin cam or whatever, like it's still it chopping well, he's done a really fucking good job. Like it looks like a chopper. It doesn't look, you know, yeah, you, you've got, got to like man. double glance. You're like, you look at it, you're yeah. like, oh, it's cool as fuck. And then you're like, holy shit, it's a twin cam. Well, there's guys that I pull up to in gas stations who they look like they would know a little <laughs> bit about motorcycles and they'll be like, yeah. damn, what year is that thing? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, fucking 2004, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> you know? Or if I'm or if I'm being funny, I'll be like '68, you know, or just throw it yeah, yeah, yeah. be funny, you know. But yeah. uh, it's it's got the look, man. It's just and it, just the fit of it. It just I'm in, I'm in love with it. I get goosebumps thinking about riding that motorcycle, man. It's, he, he's such a good builder. Man. He's Dude, a talented guy. And the thing the thing is about him, I've worked with people on projects. You know, like I had a car built, you know, a long time ago, and and that was that guy was my friend, but he had a hard time running the hours and yep. that kind of thing. You get behind on projects and stuff. Love him to yep. death, but you know, you could see that and he closed yeah. up shop because of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Mike at Chop and Weld, he, he just, he was like, you know, you go in and he's like, here's the entire list of what I did. Here's the fucking hours I spent on it, you know? And then he, you just, you don't feel any kind of, weirdness in the situation yes. you know like yeah totally he can show you what he did and how long it took to do yeah man. and i appreciate that you know and i also don't want yeah. someone to take my bike in and be like oh yeah i can do that for you i'll get it like a week and then it's five months later yeah 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 you know? I, I yeah yeah I, i've, I've had that before him, yeah and when, it makes you I pissed then you end up hate you end up hating the person where yep. if they would have told you up front i can't touch it for five months totally. you'd be like fuck but okay so mike's yeah. like that he's like my bike's there right now getting a different exhaust put on it. Right. Yep. And he, uh, when I wrote him like last month about it, he goes, he's like, dude, I'd love to do that for you. I can't touch it until this date. Yeah. You know what I at mean? At least you know where you're at. At least you're like, okay, and cool. I know where I'm Let's, at. I'm yeah. like, okay, cool. And I'm like, well, I'm doing, I'm putting in the mama tried. So if you can't get it done before that, just let me know. And then I'll, I'll bring it after that, you know? Yeah. And he's yeah. like, no, it'd be no problem to knock it out before that, but I can't, Perfect. I don't even want you to bring it down here until this date you know yeah. so and when you go in there you can see he's got a system you know he's always he's working on many bikes Sick. a day he spends x amount of time on each one and you know it's, yeah it's couldn't find anybody cooler and better to that do. that is that's rare these days to find Fuck someone yeah, like is. professional like that because so yeah. many people take your fucking bike they take your deposit they take everything and then but then they take another five at the same time and they've got like 10 sitting there waiting and then they get in this like weird bind where they can't actually finish anybody's well because they've already because... spent the money from totally, the bike that man. you brought in a month ago yeah so they can't spend the time to work on it now because they need to take totally. another bike to fill that spot yeah man yeah i yeah. i had one guy do it um I won't fucking name and shame him, but I, I, just, yeah. I had one guy do it and like there was like a set deadline and it was like, you know, it was a set deadline for a show and I didn't get it back to like three months later. And then when I got it back, yeah. it wasn't even finished. Yeah. You know I mean, it's just like, yeah. Ah, when you that's... find somebody that does, that does a good job like that, it's, I'm lucky enough that I got this other that's mechanic gold. here. I got a mechanic nearby that's super old timer, dude. He's had this. Yeah. Dude, like a one room motorcycle shop for like 30 years, and the shop's just covered Sick. in flames on the outside. Yeah. He's got like big fucking gnarly mustache with like yes. fucking skew- skewing on a cigar all the time, you know? Yeah. And he uh he was like one of the big clubs around here is mechanic forever, you know. And he uh yeah, I tell I always take my bike to him for like mechanic work shit, you know, because I know yeah. Mike's like he's down there building shit. He ain't trying to fuck with the mechanic stuff. So yeah, man. I take it over to this other Mike, Mike Stalker's his name. It's Cycle Shack is what it's called. And like, it's cool as shit, man. Cause he, come, yeah. he you can see his eyes light up when I bring in like my FX star or like the chopper, you know, cause he's like, oh, yeah, dude. Sick. Yeah. And he's like yeah. showing me these, he has these photos on the wall of him riding, popping wheelies on FXRs in like the eighties or like the, you know, like late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, yeah. He's like popping a wheelie on one, you know, and it's got like yeah, turbo man. hanging off the side of it. You know, sick. I like to work with those dudes too, man. This is, yeah, it's man. cool you know again, again you know people around yeah and you know it's gonna fucking it's gonna get done and 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 like they've got like years and years and a wealth of fucking knowledge that you know it's not gonna be half done it's gonna be fucking done right yeah i've always been good to him so he's one of the guys i call if i break down the side of the road who's like that old timer he's like check this check this and it's always yeah. the very first fucking thing he tells me to check it's crazy you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah man. he just knows I'm, I'm always so like blown away by it but then uh, someone said to me the other day, they were like, 
yeah, but you've got crazy knowledge when it comes to tattooing. You say, yeah, I, yeah, I showed you a sure. tattoo the other day and you knew who did it without even, I was like, oh, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's the like, exact yeah. same thing. If you spent your time on that, like you did tattooing, you would yeah. have, you would have that same yeah. knowledge. You know, it's just, I've been yeah. engulfed in tattooing for 16 years. So totally. that's where my I, knowledge goes. <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't imagine trying to learn something new now. Like yeah. w- when I thought I was going to quit, like the whole time I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> I don't, I hear people quitting all the time, but I don't know how it's even possible. I just, I, yeah, I, I haven't do it. ran, I haven't, I haven't lost that love yet, man. I still, yeah. I'm lucky, you know, in a way, I guess, but I just, yeah. uh, I still love, I love it more now than I ever have. I know what it, I, like, you know? I figured it out recently what it is, what, what I did wrong, where it went wrong. And um, I went private. Um, so, everyone's going private now but like i went private right like five years ago when it was just mm-hmm. like people were like oh yeah and uh i went private so five years i've been private i've been on my own just me and customers yeah. no That's one to hard. push me That's no one hard, to man. nothing to well, that, I, yeah I, I, I did it to myself yeah that tattoo shop uh like the the environment is part of the whole picture you know exactly yeah. So you got to have that around you. You know, I, I learned totally. that actually from my old business partner. He always talked about that. And I didn't really believe it at the time, but it's I, so true, I do man. believe, I, I do believe it now. It's the, see, we're in America. We're actually on the other side of that, where I feel like a lot of the private studios are starting to close because yeah. they're starting to realize what you're realizing where they're like, fuck man, this kind of sucks. Like yeah. I need to be like in a place with people. Yeah. So totally. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that going on. And I it like is. not being the best in the shop. I like being like, because it, yeah. it pushes you, you know? Well, yeah, and it'll humble you real quick. I'm I'm not the best in my shop, and I've been tattooing for like 13 years longer than the next person behind me, you know? Yeah, man. Talk about yeah. being humbled, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I see how, these kids doing shit. That shop now? Like two years, almost two years. Yeah. Well, like a year and a half, yeah. yeah. So not Sorry, that Karen, long for you, this one. No, what are we going to say then? They're so much younger than me in tattooing years and yeah. I'm just like seeing shit they're doing. And I'm like, Oh fuck man. Like I gotta, <laughs> like, I gotta, I gotta do some shit. I gotta practice. I gotta get involved in something here. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it's good. You, it's good for you. You've started doing like a lot more styles now, haven't you? Trying. Yeah. That's my yeah. big, that's yeah. my big, that's my big goal right now is to try to tattoo other things other than, than just lettering, you know? Uh, I so love I, that I'll, Cobra you just did. Thank you. I'll yeah, always it, be the lettering it, guy. It you know, I, Thank you. I don't. Sorry. I don't ever want to not not be the lettering guy, but I I want to be a tattooer like all the way around and be able to do whatever comes in the door. I think that's cool. You yeah, know? yeah, man. That's that's a, that's another thing that's like lost now, and I fucking I kind of hate it. You know, like we were talking yeah. about people who build bikes and don't ride them. I kind of hate yeah. this whole like specializing thing where I don't know. I I I, I was taught to tattoo in the oldest shop in Scotland, and it was a case of yeah. like do everything well or fuck off and it yeah. was and, and that was the yeah i don't know yeah i don't it's, i don't regret what the way it's gone for me because it's gone really well but yeah. I, I never felt like a tattooer until i could start doing all of the you know like whatever come in the door without feeling like freaking out if somebody wants something different than what i know how to yeah. do yeah yeah, yeah yeah but i feel like even with your style though it's y- You've like you will have always been able to just translate that into another style because it's fucking line, it's hot, you know, good line work, yeah. shading, packing. Right. But like people who are just like, I, I only do the... watercolor. That's like yeah. crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, especially the, all the 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 twenty year old girls that are doing the fucking fine line tattoos now. You know, like yeah, I don't know about over there, but we got like a plague of like the permanent cosmetic girls that do tattoos now. Yeah. No. Same here. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't do any apprenticeship. They don't do any normal tattoo shit. But what they're nah. doing is, is they're taking they're taking all of those small walk ins out of tattoo shops. Yeah, mom. And you know, I can't blame them for it. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. You know? Yeah. What I mean? Nah, definitely. You know? And they're just like openly like the ones here. Um, I see one on Facebook the other day, and she was just like, um, "Yeah, I, you know, I've been doing like micro dirt, like the hair, and I've been doing like the eyebrows. Um, I'm doing my tattoo course on Saturday, so uh, Monday I'll be taking appointments for tattoos." I'm like, "Fuck, this craft yeah, that crazy. I love is dying." <laughs> it, it feels that way. I literally was looking at it while I was waiting to join this podcast. Some local 
my friend's wife had posted a picture of some local girl who's doing yeah. fucking that she's going to get like a small tattoo from. And I was just like, Oh, I get yeah. it. And the girl's, the girl's really fucking good. She does those <laughs> micro tattoos really fucking well. So I get it. But yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's dying. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a little bit man. every year. It's yeah. changing for sure. Yeah, man. But I Absolutely. think, I don't know. I think, I think it's like people like you, like when you can do everything, you're, I think you're, you know, at least you're always going to be able to make a living, you know? Yeah. If you got, if you can do everything and you have a little bit of that tattoo or hustler mentality in you, you know, because I think that, yeah. you know, before the big tattoo boom, you know, it was, it was people had to hustle to make money. You had to like yeah. go out and meet people. And, and yep. now that tattooing so over flooded and I think that the customer base has gotten a little bit smaller. Um, yeah. I think tattooers going to have to start selling again. And I think that that's going to weed a lot of people out. Yeah. Mom. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. Where it's like, I was in this shit before Instagram. So like, I'm going to be just fine. I'll go right back to selling totally. tattoos. Totally. You know what I mean? Totally. I like, <laughs> I was saying the other day to someone like I, for the past three years, I have barely posted a tattoo. I've just been, yeah. and I've been tattooing five days a week and I'm just like mm -hmm. con concentrating on doing a good tattoo and getting to know my client. And then they leave tell, you know, and I think as, you know, as long as you can do that shit, you're always going to be safe, but I don't think this amazing. like, sorry. Go on. No, I was, I was like, yeah. hey, I don't think this being a, a tattoo influencer thing will last yeah. very long. You know, it's going to get to a point where yeah. like any, any influencer, people aren't watching your shit anymore. Well, cause there's too many influencers. Everyone's influencing yeah. now. So who is the next level of that? Right. So yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, I don't want to do that part. I feel like I have to, but I don't want to do that part. You know, I think you, even if you do it, I think you do it in a, in a, uh, uh how do I say it? Like a clap. Like a classy way, nah, that's the wrong word. Yeah, I think like, you do. Yeah, I, I think, think you do it fine. right. Do you know what I mean? Try yeah. not to be too corny about it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. And it's like you know, I was on the other podcast the other day, and they're talking about, well, you know, if you want to be, if you want your post to be seen on Instagram, you have to show your face on Instagram. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, I don't like doing that. You know, but it's yeah, like man. you, you got to get on there and talk. You know, because totally. it's like, you know, I posted something the other day, and it's like I don't care if something if people are ranting and raving over something. Yeah. But I have 300,000 followers and this thing got 25 likes. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not because it was a bad tattoo. It's not because of anything other than people just aren't seeing it because it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make it into the fucking flow, you know. And I will like, post a selfie. Wow. I'll post a selfie and get like however many likes and like five appointments. Yeah. I'll post a tattoo yeah. that I really tried hard on. I'll get like 10 likes and nothing. <laughs> And you know why? You know what that is? This is because, and even I know this because when you open Instagram now and you're scrolling, you probably follow a bunch of tattooers. I know I do, yep. dude. It's like back piece, bodysuit, full yeah. chest, full sleeve, and even I don't care. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah, true. Yeah. So why would they care? They don't give a fuck. They're not even involved in yeah. tattooing. It's just all one big like badass tattoo from everybody in the world at this point. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like they don't give a shit about that. You know, yeah, I think what they yeah, do care about point. is when someone is does the right thing on their video, you know, that stops yeah. them to look at the tattoo. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, totally. I don't want to play those games, but on the other hand, I don't know fucking how, you know, it's like, yeah, I have to, I have to be seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I've built, I've built my whole career around this, around Instagram. That's kind of how it's been for all of us for a long time. So it's like, yeah, mom. It's kind of rough to, to. I kind of feel like someone like you is not really going to struggle for work, though. You would think You've that, got... right? And I talked about this on the other podcast, but it's like it's slower for me now than it's been in a very long time. Okay. Um, and I don't really tattoo many local people. Everyone I tattoo right. is from out of state. I have no local clientele. Right. Know? Okay. So it's like if I'm not, if they're not seeing me out in fucking, you know, Michigan and, you know, California and stuff, they're not coming here. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I have to be kind of doing that, you know, like playing the yep. game a little bit. And it's, I hate to feel like I've been trapped into that little hole, but yeah. here we are, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm trying to, to get out and hustle a little bit on the local, you know, stuff. And yeah, the problem is it's like, I don't really even charge more. I charge $50 more an hour than the people that work for me. Right. Right. Yep. But people assume that I charge some astronomical number just because I have 300,000 followers on Instagram. And I bet they think you're booked out like years. They think that they can't even yeah. get an appointment because it's so far out, you know? Yeah, so man. it's like, 
I need to teach people that accessibility uh, yeah. to me, you know? So yeah, that's, that's really like part of the game, I guess, is adapting yeah. to that kind of shit, you know? But yeah, I think if you're like a hometown hero, you're going to be in a way better position than some of the, the names that are, have been big on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That, that's you know? kind of like that's kind of like where I'm at. That's what's happened. Yeah. Like I've just just concentrated on just the locals and like because I live in quite a small place. It's yeah, you know, it's bit me in the arse sometimes. Because if I'm not like nice one day, that will travel. You know, like oh, he's a fucking asshole <laughs> yeah. and like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah man, it's it's kind of wild, but it is what it is. You got any like big trips coming up once the weather gets better? Well, or yeah, well, I'll be in Scotland for the tattoo convention. Yeah, so. cool. Hopefully I'll see you around there. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'll be there yeah. definitely. Get get dinner or something. Be cool. Yeah, man. Sounds good. Definitely. Awesome, yeah, man. Thank you so you, much man. for coming on. Yeah, man. Dude, Have thanks for fun. having me. I'm I'm excited to do it, man. And I'll chat with you I'll soon, s- okay? Yeah, man. I'll see you at Edinburgh. Perfect. All right, brother. Later. Cheers, bud. See ya. Late. Bye.